Hey guys, welcome to Telling the Told and Untold. My name is Toho. For today's case, we're starting out in the Czech Republic and I do want to apologize for any like names of people and places that I might mispronounce. I did try to find the correct pronunciation for all those names. So yeah, I do apologize in advance. Rodovan Kretscher was born in Kaskai Tessin in the Czech Republic on the 4th of November 1968. I couldn't find much about his childhood, everything that I could find out about him basically just started where he's most notoriously known for. So by the 1990s he decided to move to Prague so that he could start his money lending business because not only was it the capital of the Czech Republic but it was also the capital for business. But soon after he started this business it failed and then he decided to go so he just ventured out into oil and he became very well known for this he was really good at like oil trading and he would get oil from so many different countries like Russia and imported into the Czech Republic following the velvet revolution in the early 1990s Kretschert started his criminal activities and basically what the Velvet Revolution was um, is that on the 17th of November 1989 student protesters filled the streets of Prague and this was eight days after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the same freedom that all the protesters had in Berlin made its way into the streets of Prague and soon People of all ages decided to join this protest and by the 20th of November 1989 half a million Czechs and Slovaks joined in and they went to Wentless Square and forced the communists out and by the end of 1989 Czechoslovakia was on its way to having an elected president for the first time in decades. So. In simpler terms, the Velvet Revolution um, was basically just a non-violent revolution that saw the overthrow of the communist government in 1989. By the mid-1990s, all of Kretscher's activities were being monitored by the police because like all his money dealings were like they were very large but they were also very suspicious so they just seemed like they were basically just illegal, so the police officers were looking into this and just watching over them. In 2002, Kretscher's father, Lampert Kretscher, was abducted for ransom. And it's said that Kretscher found this man that abducted his father and took him to like a secret location and once they were there, put money on the table and a gun to his head and basically just gave him an ultimatum and said it and said it's either you tell me where my father is um and you take this money or i kill you apparently this man did walk free but to this day radovan radovan's father's body has never been found and it said that this whole ordeal changed him and not for the better and soon after this happened Kretscher just started to become a mafia and gangster in the Czech Republic and his status in the underworld grew. Kretscher led one of the most powerful crime syndics in Czech history and he had connections with so many people. Um, he had connections with at least 10 ministers current and past and then two ministers that were in internal affairs were linked to him and it is believed that he murdered about five people so he was involved in both a disappearance and murder but all those cases have never really been like officially been linked to him and this is probably because of all the connections that he had. 
in the late 90s, Kretscher built himself a luxury villa. It is said that this villa was in his wife's name, Katharina, and they like bought this for about 20 million Czech crowns, invested in it, made it bigger, and by 2014, this villa was worth um, 400 million Czech crowns. The exchange rate in 2014 with the rand i think the rand was one rand and check crowns was 1.9 so it basically just cost over 200 million in 2014 and probably today it's worth so much more and this house was so big that it even had an aquarium with a shark in it because why not on the 18th of June 2005, Czech Republic Special Unit went to his home. They searched it and this raid lasted about seven hours. Afterwards, he was arrested for further questioning because they did find evidence of um, a conspiracy to murder a customs officer, fraud, and as well as another cons criminal conspiracy. And somehow after they had arrested him he managed to escape it is believed um that he probably prayed he probably paid a bribe so that he could escape but other people believe that um the police were just incompetent and tired from the seven hours of searching but personally i do believe that he was bribed because as we go on with the rest of this case um, you'll probably see why I think that. Kretscher's escape was a huge scandal and political scene and his status went from just like an ordinary gangster to um, like celebrity status and some people even referred to him as superhero. After Kretscher managed to escape, the Czech police president at the time um, was had to resign and many other police officials were punished which also just make me believe more that it probably was a bribe than like just police incompetence. It is believed that Kretscher left the country on foot then bicycle, boat, a couple of cars until finally he managed to catch a plane and this is when he went to his next home for the next two years which um, was the seashells. There he continued his life of crime and bribery and a couple of months later in September of the same year police officials did find evidence of him living there but not much was done until two years later in 2007 where the Czech Republic um, extradite wanted to extradite him from the seashells back to the Czech Republic so basically they had an extradition treaty and this is just like um, what is it it's like a unique contract with that two countries have where you are able to get the person get the resident from your own country that might be living in another country that has a com that has committed a crime in your country and a person can be extradited if they um, committed a crime but they haven't been tried for it, if you committed a crime, you're in custody and you escaped, or you went or you were convicted of a crime in absentia, so basically you just weren't present when they convicted you of the crime. So because of this because of this treaty and they had signed it, they were basically just coming to go they were going to fetch Kretscher and take him back to the Czech Republic but Kretscher knew this because obviously he also had like connections and he wasn't going to allow that to happen and in 2007 he got a fake passport under the name of Egbert Jules Savvy and flew to South Africa. Upon his arrival in South Africa at O.R. Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg, they did see that his passport was a fake and after that he was taken into custody. But somehow he managed to evade the law. Um, apparently once he went to court and everything, he basically just said that the Czech Republic were 
basically just had like a conspiracy against him and because the relevant people at the time apparently agreed with him they just let him free and then he just went on to live his life in South Africa but other people do believe that he bribed the judge to let him go free and that's what's most well no what what's most believed Kretscher then moved to Bedford View, which is in the east of Johannesburg. He lived in a big, beautiful house. He had expensive cars and he just began working his life of crime in South Africa. To the public, it seemed as though he had so much money, but it is said that most of this money he got from his mother, who was still in the Czech Republic, and he just used that money for like important dealings but there were times where he even couldn't afford petrol because you know he was basically just starting up again. Soon after this Kretscher established contacts in the local crime scene and his most well-known associate is known as Cyril William Paul Bega but he's mostly just known as Cyril Bega and it is said that Cyril was the head of his security. So Cyril Beaker um, was a former MK Kader who was shot dead on the 21st of March 2011. In 1994 he allegedly attacked a suspect in a murder case. In 1999 he and two other men assaulted a woman outside an escort club and she, after this she had to go into the witness protection program. In 2002 he and five other men were acquitted of murdering a Chinese sailor Hong Liang Wu in Long Street in Cape Town and in the same year the Scorpions investigated his company Red Security. In 2007, during the ANC conference in Bulogwane, there were SMSs alleging that he and someone else were the owners of the elections agency which controlled the voting process. In the same year, a Russian national was shot dead and they were known as like friends as well as business partners. And in 2010, Cyril was linked to the murder of a well-known German tycoon, Uwe Gimbal. There were other associates that Kretscher is believed to have murdered and these people include Kevin Treitzman who was a private investigator who allegedly provided intelligence services to Kretscher. Uwe Gimbel, who was also linked to Cyril, he was a German luxury car dealer. Um, Lolly Jackson, a Johannesburg businessman, Chris Conmetis, Ian Jordan, who was Jackson's lawyer, Mark Andrews, who was Lolly Jackson's business partner, Veslin Lagnan, who was from Serbia, he was shot and killed in Bedford View, as well as someone known as Basim Sam Isa, who was gunned down near his Bedford View home. So even apart from like the connection that these people obviously had with Kretscher. Also the fact that some of them lived in Bedford View or like near Bedford View and obviously Kretscher's home in South Africa was in Bedford View so also just that but I should note that he has never officially been charged with any of the above mentioned murders. In 2012, Kretscher was sentenced in abstantia in a proke court to 11 years in jail on charges of money laundering and in relation to three charges um, in the Czech Republic outstanding since 2006. Despite this, South African authorities, specifically the National Prosecuting Authority and Home Affairs, failed to act and extradite Kretscher or prosecute him for crimes committed in South Africa because of a lack of evidence. In July 2013, Kretscher survived an attempt on his life. He was outside Money Point and an armed car with remote control shotgun started shooting at his car. But fortunately or unfortunately, um, his car was had bulletproof windows, so the bullets obviously didn't go through. And some people do believe that Kretscher owned Money Point in Bedford View, but to this day he has denied owning it. 
A couple of months after the attempt on his life in November 2013, after being in South Africa for about six years, at this point, Rodovan Kretscher was finally arrested by crime intelligence. It's said that the Hawks were planning to arrest him on the very same day, however, they were just a couple of hours too late, and this arrest by crime intelligence and not the Hawks also created a greater rift between the two. Kretscher was aware that he was going to be arrested and this is probably because of all the connections that he had. He was planning on leaving South Africa on the 29th of November to join his family who were already in Argentina. His plan was that he was going to fly from Lanceria Airport to Namibia and from there fly to Argentina. The reason why Kretscher was finally arrested was because of forensic pathologists Paul O'Sullivan. He started his investigation into Kretscher in 2009. He had compiled over 80 page dossier on his gang activities and he handed between 12 to 15 statements to police from a range of individuals implicating Kretscher in multiple crime activities. And Paul Sullivan also says that um, Kretscher attempted to take his life no less than six times and this is probably because Kretscher found out about Paul investigating him and just like many of his other associates he just planned on getting rid of a problem but thankfully he didn't succeed. Rodovan Kretscher was convicted in the High Court of South Africa for multiple charges including kidnapping and attempted murder. So Kretscher attempted to murder someone known as Beki Lukele. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his surname properly. So the story that happened with Ubeki is that he was the brother of another man only known as Doctor and Doctor worked at a cargo company at OR Tambo International Airport. Apparently Doctor disappeared with at least 25 kilograms of tick and he was meant to help get this tick to Australia but he disappeared and because they couldn't get a hold of him they just decided to go for someone that's close to him and that's why they took Becky. So um, because Kretscher had so many connections he had a police friend and this police friend went to Becky and tried to like um, take him to go get a polygraph so I'm not sure whether it was like an actual polygraph at the police station or this was just a way to get him to like go with him but that didn't work and then um, I think it was a Saturday they went to his house in Katlehong and kidnapped him took him to Bedford View to Kretsch's, um workplace which was money point and once he got there they t like sat him down on a chair tied his hands around his back and put a mask over his head. Kretscher and his five co-accused all took turns assaulting Becky and after that Kretscher said that they should take like the mask that they had put over his face and take it off and then he basically just looked at him and asked where his brother was and then he said that he didn't know the last time he spoke to his brother was two days ago and then Christian looked at him and said like do you know who I am do you know what I'm doing and basically this is the hill that you're willing to die on then that's up to you and then took um, a kettle of boiling water poured it over his head. It said that after this happened, Becky just screamed in excruciating pain and then suddenly he just stopped and started shaking and then asked them if he could call his brother doctor. So after this, Kretscher told his five accused to just go take him so that, so that he can get a hold of his brother. So they put Becky in the car, they drove somewhere near Alex they assembled a phone and this is where Becky called his brother and basically was telling him what was happening saying that you better give these people like what you owe them because if I die it's literally because of you and essentially just like why am I in it you know like you did this now here I am so like just sort out everything that you're connected to and doctor then um told the guys because they took the phone back from Becky he told the guys that tomorrow that he would bring back the drugs that he had stolen from them and he would come with his 
father i'm assuming just as like uh just for i don't know so his father could protect him or something and that probably could have went sideways like probably could have like killed all three of them but luckily they didn't and that's the story about the kidnapping and attempted murder charge on the 23rd of February 2016, Rodovan Kretscher was finally sentenced to 35 years in jail on charges relating to drug dealing, kidnapping and attempted murder. The day before he was sentenced, when he was basically just telling the judge why he shouldn't be sentenced, he threatened him. He literally said, I believe you stay in Bedford View and the judge was so shook, like he was just, um, it, he was just like scared like and rightfully so because this is like a czech republic czech republic mafia essentially and just couldn't bribe his way out of this and he was so scared for his life <sighs> imagine Kretsch's five co-accused included three former hawks cops samuel mudisa murabeng Jan Le Fumufukeng, Jeff Untarane, a taxi owner, Siboni Somia, and Desai Lupondo. I think that just shows you how well connected he is. That he literally has like hawks on his payroll, essentially, or had. And these five men were all sentenced to 15 years for the kidnapping and attempted murder, murder of Beggy. After the creature was convicted of all those things, it is said that there was supposed to be another trial for his um, for the attempted murder of Paul Sullivan, but I couldn't find any more information about that, so I don't know if it went through or not. And that's not the end of this case. I don't know where to put all this other information, so I'm just gonna put it right here. But um, on the 26th of September, 2000 and 15 in an apparent raid of a number of prison cells including creatures they found so many illegal things so in his room they found a pistol ammunition a knife an item that appeared to be a taser a pepper spray gun screwdriver steel blade 10 cell phones a memory stick a diary which contained all the names of the witnesses and investigators in his case in his case um, as well as a sketch showing a detailed map of the prison building and he planned on escaping before he was set to go to trial in about like in October 2015 and it's revealed that he had put aside 246 million rand to this escaped there were prison there were three prison guards that he had recruited and each were to get paid 1.5 million to help him escape and he also was he also used some of that money to get a helicopter to the prison to like get him out of the prison and to land in another country so he was going to pay for that and then he was also going to pay a whole other like a lot of other people as well to just help him escape and fortunately it didn't go through but i think that's just so crazy that there's so many people on this man's payroll that he literally could have escaped Kretscher wrote a 16 page letter where he claims that he paid former President Jacob Zuma 2.5 million for asylum and this allegedly happened in 2011. He says that he asked his friend Cyril um, if you could help him with asylum and his friend was like oh don't worry he basically knows a guy and then introduced Kretscher to Dudu Zanizuma which is the former president's son and after this they drove to Nkandla and that's where he gave um the former president's son 2.5 million and this was just like a deposit he was supposed to pay 5 million and then the following year he drove back there and this time without the former president's son and this um and after this like they spoke and this is where the former president um spoke to malusi gigaba and told him to prepare asylum papers did i mention that this he claims this but like allegedly allegedly dimension allegedly 
In February of 2015, his wife Katarina was arrested and about a month later she was released. I couldn't find any more information about what happened to her and that was like the most recent thing. All the other articles were like in Czech and I, I couldn't translate them. Last year in June, his former girlfriend, so he was having an affair basically marissa and christopher um was to be sentenced to 24 months imprisonment or pay a fine of eighty thousand rand and i'm not too sure what happened with this i don't know whether she actually paid the fine or she is currently in prison for those 24 months but that's what happened and this is because she was one of the people that helped plan Kretscher's failed escape from prison in May of this year, Kretscher's lawyer said that Rodovan Kretscher is afraid that he might die in South African prison as his health continues to deteriorate. He claims that at the prison that he is currently in, they refused, they keep denying him medical treatment and that's the last that I've heard about him. And yeah, that's it for today's case. If you guys have any comments about Kretscher and literally just all of this corruption and his crime syndicate and just how massive it is, please leave a comment down below. This video was very different, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!